Okay, welcome in. Uh, in this video, we're going, going to go over uh, a very simple um, model, regression model, uh, we can use for predicting um, game output, specifically uh, passing yards. Um, and like in all these videos, you know, it's just a five to 10 minute video. So we're just going to kind of give a simple example. Naturally, there are a lot of extensions and things you can do and other ways you can approach this, um, you know, adding different variables, adding, looking at different things, making different kind of regression adjustments. We're just going to give a, a very basic here, and then you can kind of build on it um, um, from there. And we'll, and we'll talk about some of those examples as we go. So I've already written the code, um, just because sometimes I feel like when I'm writing it, it can't be as instructive, but we'll walk through it line by line. Um, these first three lines are things we've talked about in previous videos, just uh, loading the data from this NFL Fast R um, amazing data source. And uh, this is all data from 2021. And um, if you'll recall, you know, this data has just a ton of different columns uh, for all of these different, you know, variables, almost 400 different columns. So basically almost any variable you can think of um, is in here. And in this uh, example, we want to start, <clears throat> I think usually it's, it's helpful to define a simple question before you start. So you kind of don't get waylaid by, you know, all these different uh, paths. I want to think about, um, let's build a model to predict how many uh, passing attempt or passing yards a team will have in a given game. And I want to have a very simple model. I want to have two inputs, um, how good the team's offense is going into that game and how good the opposing defense is uh, going into that game. Because naturally, um, you know, if you have a good offense, if you have the, I guess not this year, maybe, but in general, the Chiefs or the Bills, um, you know, you're going to expect more passing yards, but if you're playing a good defense, like the Steelers, you might expect less passing yards. So we want to like use those two variables and, and kind of see, and again, you can think of a lot of other variables. Um, but for now we're going to start with those two variables. So I'm for, I'm first just going to define, um, my data as all the data where there was a pass attempt. So this just kind of makes it easier, cleaner. Um, we'll, we'll cut down the data a bunch. So data where pass attempt equals one. And then I'm going to do my big aggregation. And aggregate is, I think, one of my favorite functions in R. Um, you know, it's, it's very fast and, and speedy and can do very powerful things. I want to aggregate the yards gained on each play. And again, this is, these are just all passes. So I'm going to aggregate the yards gained. And I want to do that by game ID. So that tells me, you know, which game it is, the, possess the team possessing the ball and the team defending the ball. And I want to sum those. Okay, so I'm going to run that. I'm calling it data reg. I'm just going to make these names and then we can inspect uh, what data reg looks like. And you, you can note that like this list in aggregate that kind of lines up one to one with the columns game ID, possession team, defensive team. And then the last is uh, the sum of, of all of those. And, you know, I've, I've kind of just added names manually here. But um, and this is this is pretty cool. We have like in 2021 week six, uh, this game was 2021 week six Cardinals versus Browns. The Browns had 217 passing yards, uh, which means that the Cardinals allowed uh, 217 passing yards. And similarly, in, in week eight, this was that kind of crazy game where the Packers didn't have any wide receivers. Um, the Packers had 184 passing yards, and the Cardinals obviously were the defensive team. They allowed 184 um, passing yards. You know, we can do a couple quick things. Like we can look at um, the game that had the most passing yards. That was the overtime game versus the Cow with the Cowboys versus the Patriots. Dak had four, you know, almost 450 passing yards in that game. We can look at um, the men, um, <laughs> the crazy uh, Justin Fields Bears game, you know, Justin Fields. Like, I think even if you looked at, if you could use sacks as well as negative yards, he had negative passing yards. So that was a crazy game. And you can just look at, you know, the general summary statistics. So, you know, an average game is 240, almost 245 yards, which I think kind of makes sense. Um, so anyways, we have this great data and we want to use this data to predict, um, okay, going into a game, uh, team one, team two, team one, the offensive team, if they're good at passing team two, the defensive team, if they're good at stopping the pass, you know, what's our predicted, um, amount. So what we're going to do is we are going to, for each of these kind of observations, we have 244 observations here. I want to add two columns. And for this first column, I want to say, What's the average yards per game that Cleveland, the Browns throw for on offense, not including this game, because I don't want like, I don't want to actually use this game to try to predict this game. I want to use all the other games that the Browns have been in. And similarly, in all the other games that the Cardinals are in, how many yards on average have they allowed? And again, I don't want to use this game 
because um, I don't want to use this game to actually predict this game. So I did a for loop here. It's a little bit ugly, but I think it's nice because it's instructive and it's easy kind of to see. I defined my two columns that I was talking about. So I'm calling this yards def, which is the amount of yards that the defense uh, allows. I'm going to move my thing here. Um, the, so the average amount of yards the Cardinals would allow, and here's yards possession, the average amount of yards that Cleveland would would score. And I'm just going to loop through, um, you know, this this uh, regression. And, you know, let's let's take a look at one of the loops. Imagine that I equals one here. I want to grab, sorry, I'm, I'm going to expand my window here. Um, for yards def, you know, for the average yards that defense gives up, I want the mean of yards um, such that the... I have this specific defensive team, right? So I have, like, in this case, I have the Cardinals. I want to see all the, like, the average yards when the Cardinals are on defense and such that we are in a different game. So the game ID does not equal this exclamation point equal sign means does not equal um, such that the game ID does not equal this game. So basically the average yards that the Cardinals give up in all other games than this game um, is, is the idea here. And it's the exact same for yards possession, you know, average yards where... The, the Brown, you know, this team is the possession team in this case is the Browns for all games that are not this game. Okay. So kind of ugly, but, but hopefully, you know, it makes sense. We want, we want to get the averages outside of this game. That'd be great if I could drag, sorry, my computer is super slow. Okay. There we go. I can run this code and now um, it's only going to take a second and voila. So now we, we have these columns filled in and what this column says is, I don't know why my order switched, but this column says is the Cardinals on average, not including this game, give up 196 yards passing. And the Browns on average give up, um, or the Browns on average uh, throw for 222 um, yards uh, passing outside of this game. So, um, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, we have that there. And now we're, we're pretty much all set. We have our data nice and clean. Everything is set up and we want to regress. We're going to make a regress, build a regression, um, regressing the, uh, total yards uh, passed for by the offense. This is total yards passed for by Cleveland in the game, you know, on the average yards given up by that defense and the average yards actually gained by the offense. And we do that with this LM command. LM stands for linear model. Um, yards is our Y variable. And this kind of like, this means this tilde thing, or I think it's a tilde, it means uh, regressing on and we're regressing on the yards allowed by the defense, the yards allowed by the offense. And we just specify that we're using data reg is our data table so i run this i think standard r convention is to just save this in an object called model um, and model you know is a complicated object it has a bunch of things but we can get kind of the output the summary by running summary model and we see kind of a standard regression output so you know for before we look at that what is your guess at home do you think it's more important to have like what do you think affects the yards more uh, in a game the, how good the offense is or how good the defense is so just take a second and, and think about the answer to that so hopefully you guessed correctly that the offense is more important in determining how many yards the offense will put up which makes sense um and here's our regression output you know the first two things that i will look at are these estimates so this is saying that for every extra yard that the offense averages per game going into a game, we expect them to um, throw for 0.55 more yards, which makes sense. If an offense is, you know, it makes sense that this is positive and it makes sense that it's not quite one, but it's, you know, it's a little bit over a half. Um, if an offense is throwing for 500 yards in a game, our default is that we're going to, you know, expect about 250 yards from them in a game. Um, similarly, the coefficient for defense is also positive. The more yards that a defense gives up, the more yards you expect the offense, the opposing offense to throw for, but it's about half as big. So that, you know, it's, it's, it's smaller, which makes sense. Like it matters. The offense performance is more dependent on the offense than the defense. So it makes sense that defense is also positive. Um, but uh, the, you know, it's less positive. And then we can also look at the actual significance of these. So the, the offensive yards going into the game, extremely significant P value, basically zero, which makes sense. Um, and the defense is, not quite significant you know p value of 0.11 is not too bad it means it's like it's it's pretty solid but it's not significant at the five percent or even ten percent level so um we do have a positive coefficient but not super significant and you know there are ways to kind of tease this out to look at um you know control for team skill 
variety of things that again we're not going to do here because it's a short video but you can kind of see how we could we can make this more um sophisticated we could add like many more variables like check downs deep throws mid throws throwing to the left throwing to the right um you know based on if you're winning or losing all that stuff uh can make this kind of more complicated to tease out the relationship but just to close i want to you know demonstrate how this might work so let's just do data reg one in this case um I, you know, going into this game, the Browns throw for 222.5. I'm just going to do 222 um, yards. And so we would, to predict, we would multiply that by this estimate. Plus uh, the Cardinals allow this many yards per game, which we multiply by this estimate. And then we would just add our intercept here. So standard regression. And we would get 220 uh, yard, 221 yards predicted. And look at that. That's really close to the 217 yards that was actually uh, happened in the game. So uh, a decent um, prediction, uh, you know, in this case, which, which is nice. Um, there's, there's a, you know, way to do this in R instead of typing it out manually, but I just wanted to kind of show you what, what was going on. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. Again, very simple way to look at predicting, you know, uh, team stuff and, and what's nice is you can start with this code and you can very quickly generalize it so instead of looking at pass attempt passes i can we can look at rushes and we can run this whole code again um everything is the same it's just with rush attempts instead of passes and we get um you know a similar result look at this like it's a slightly smaller coefficient 0.47 instead of 0.55 but still you know very significant um similar for the defense like positive but not quite significant um, but but that's that's kind of cool. And, you, you know, we, we can now that we have the starter code, we can do a variety of things like that. So if you enjoyed this very simple model building for NFL analytics and we'll see you next time.